There are only a handful of experiments in physics that completely transformed physics. At m many people's top of the list would have to be the Michelson Morley experiment. In the 19th century, physicists thought that since sound waves travel through air, light waves must travel through some sort of medium as well. They called this theoretical medium ether. The famous luminiferous ether. This magical medium that was hypothesized to be what light required to move through the vacuum of space. The Earth orbits the sun at about 66,500 miles per hour. If light travels through ether, they reasoned, then as the Earth moves through the ether, the speed of light should be different going with the ether than perpendicular to it. In an attempt to show the effects of ether on the speed of light, Albert Michelson and Edward Morley conducted an experiment in 1887 at what is now Case Western Reserve University. Compared to the speed of light, Earth is not moving that fast. So if you're gonna check the difference in the speed of light, measured with the movement of the Earth, compared with transverse to it, you need a level of precision that was that, that no one had before. The Michelson interferometer was just such an apparatus. Michelson and Morley devised an apparatus that would detect minute differences in speed between two beams of light. Light from one source is split into two directions through a half-silvered mirror. These beams are bounced between other mirrors and then recombined back into a single beam. When two light beams combine, if their waves are completely synchronized, the peaks combine to make an even more intense peak. If they are one half wavelength off, their peaks combine and cancel out the intensity. Slight differences in speed between two light waves will therefore produce a pattern based on the amount of interference between the two beams. This is known as an interference pattern. Examining the interference pattern from the two light beams sent out in different directions would clearly show if the speed of each light beam were different in different directions. But Michelson and Morley never detected such a difference. Their results were inconsistent with the existence of ether. The scientific world didn't know what to make of it. Either the famous scientists in Europe, all uh, Lord Rayleigh uh, and Lord Kelvin and Lord Thompson, were saying, hey, come on, you must have done something wrong here. Uh, there has to be an ether. And the whole thing didn't get resolved until many, many years later when Einstein came along. Einstein's theory of special relativity proposed that the speed of light is always the same, regardless of the speed of the light source. The results of the Michelson-Morley experiment were entirely consistent with Einstein's view of the universe. And this served as the turning point in modern physics. Michelson-Morley experiment was an experimental advance in technology that transformed science. Not only physics, but science. So the first question is, according to the mainstream heliocentric model, did Michelson Morley debunk the ether? Yes. Yeah, of course it did. Uh, stupid flurf, we already know that uh, there is no such thing as the ether. Michelson Morley debunked it. That's all it was about. The next question is, is all that is needed to explain Michelson Morley from within a heliocentric framework, the removal of an ether. So to put that simple as yes. possible. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah, of course. All that it proved was our only option was that there is no ether. That explains why we didn't get the interference pattern. That's why we got zero, because there is no there is no ether. That's that explains it. There's no problem. They were just trying to detect the ether. They weren't able to prove the ether because they didn't get an interference pattern, so it debunked the ether. That's all that Michael Michelson Morley did. It had nothing to do with the motion of the earth, it had nothing to do with anything else. So all it did was disprove the ether. Okay. Can we use an interferometer to detect the motion of an object moving in a curved path? Yes. Yeah, of course. That's how we detect the rotation of the Earth with ring laser gyros. It detects the, ob the object, in this case of the Earth, spinning. And that's how we know that the Earth is rotate a rotating globe, because we use a static effect, which is interferometry, to measure the motion of the rotation of the Earth, right? Which gives us an interference pattern. Okay. We can take a trip back in time to the Michelson Gale Pearson experiment in 1925, which used a modified version of the Michelson Morley interferometer to measure the Sagnac effect of Earth's rotation. The experiment confirmed the angular velocity of Earth as measured by astronomy. Star rotation. So their prediction 
match the results within 98 percent accuracy what are the odds right the interferometer kept showing an interference pattern that basically perfectly measured this phenomena in fact for years we've been told that's one of the primary evidences or proofs that the earth is rotating is that the ring laser detects its rotation by using an interferometer and this the Stagniac effect and is so precise not only do modern aircraft have three fiber optic gyros on board to measure your pitch and roll but it can actually measure the rotation of the earth at um uh oh bob how much was that again a 15 degree per hour drift thanks bob by the way you have a device that's designed to measure rotation it measures rotation normally how it's designed you were very successful in measuring the rotation of the earth so next question can this be done without an ether yeah of course because we just covered that the ether's been disproven and that's all mickelson morley was about they think that the ether has been debunked they don't think there is an ether yet they are claiming that the interferometer is detecting the motion of an object in a curved path in this scenario the earth that they believe is a globe that spins right is the Earth moving in a curved path around the Sun? In the Heliocentric model, yes, the Earth is moving in a curved path, right? Because it's it's curving, okay. it's, it's it's orbiting around the Sun. So if yeah, if, half curved. Yeah, exactly. If an object's going around something else, it's curving. Then the next question is, can interferometry be used to detect an object moving in a curved path with or without the ether? Now that may sound redundant because it is and it's it's because it, you literally have to sneak it back in there to make sure we're still on the same page in real life application. Can interferometry be used to detect an object moving in a curved path with or without an ether? Yes. The answer has to be yes. If if the answer is not yes to this, then the globe earther could not claim that the ring laser gyro is detecting the rotation of the earth. You were very successful in measuring the rotation of the Earth. Thanks, Bob. So, um, did the interferometer in Michelson yeah. Morley detect the assumed orbit of the Earth? The answer is no, from all sides. No. Yeah. Um, would removing the ether alone explain the results of Michelson Morley? I don't think so. Right. The answer is no. No, because. We just established that it can detect the motion of an object in a curved path even without the ether. So just getting rid of the ether wouldn't explain why it didn't detect the motion of the Earth. And then, now what that brings us to is did Mickelson Morley debunk Newtonian mechanics? The answer is yes. When Mickelson Morley didn't detect the orbit of the Earth, immediately it debunked Newtonian mechanics. Right? So if you wanted to keep the orbit, you had to get rid of Newtonian mechanics, and you have to get rid of the ether. So yeah, then they're gonna have to put in something else, though, right? Yes, exactly. So, so because there's also uh, the removal of Newtonian mechanics and its replacement. Because obviously you need some type of dynamic claim, a, me a mechanical claim, right? A mechanism to cause the Earth to supposedly move around the sun, right? And so since you're getting rid of New Newton, you're going to have to replace him. That's where Einstein came in, that was relativity. Now, what did relativity say? What did, what did Einstein say to fix the situation? Well, Einstein said that the, um, the Earth is actually free-falling in a linear path. And because it has a linear speed, right, and on the Earth, it's just going straight. It's free-falling, right? Uh, then you can't detect, you won't detect it with the interferometer because there's not an actual force acting on the Earth. It's not physically pulling it around the sun from the Earth. There is no actual force pulling us in a curved path. We're actually just free falling without a force acting upon us in a straight path. Therefore, the interferometer could not detect it. Okay, last question here, knowing that, that Einstein had to replace Newton for this to be explained is if relativity was required to explain the results of Michelson Morley by claiming that the Earth's orbit could not be detected, then would a consistent detection of motion falsify relativity? Oh. 
Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it has to. It has to be a yes. Like that. There's no ways around it. <laughs> I know. It just seems so simple to me. It's like, wow. Well, and it, it is, dude. Like you put it to the point where a five-year-old can understand this crap. Yeah, yeah. Either it's going in a straight path or a curved path. Yeah. And which, which first off, that that is just silly and ridiculous. I don't know. Like I never. I had no idea that the what I was believing in. That we're believing that we're literally free falling in a curved path. It's like that. Honest to God, if I'm gonna be honest, that sounds made up. It gets like, much like that's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's it gets true. worse. I'm, it's, it's it's dumb. Like like who? Like I never knew that that was what the globe like actually believes. And I like that's what I believed, and I didn't even know that shit. Like I'm supposed to believe that we're free falling around the sun, and that's why we can't. That sounds just made up, right? And you tell me I like that's that. ridiculous. Better not be me. Yeah. But I do, apparently. Like, I didn't know that. I didn't even know that that's what I believe, you know? How do you feel about that belief, though? Well, I feel like that I'm being fucking bullshitted. Like, I don't... I just just don't understand. Like, where did you come up with that? Like, show me how you prove that we are free-falling, curving around the sun. That this just... It sounds so ridiculous. I want to know how you know that. You know what I mean? That's where I'm at with that. It's like, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, the answer is because that has to be happening to explain the test or the Earth is stationary. That is, that is the only answer. So do you agree that if relativity was required to explain the results of Michelson-Morley by claiming that the, that the Earth's orbit could not be detected and a consistent detection of motion would falsify relativity? Oh, well, if, if a claim is shown to be false, then that would falsify that claim. There you go. And you notice how even then you couldn't just say yes. Like, why can't you just say yes, right? Like, why? Like, I, I well, just... It, it's all hypothetical because it hasn't been shown. Oh, my gosh. How is he not being bad faith at this point, right? Like, <laughs> I guess if you cover your eyes, then you can say it wasn't shown to you. I guess. <laughs> yeah, but wait. Before you even take the bait on that, it's like... It's a hypothetical preface. If relativity was required to explain Mickelson-Morley by claiming the orbit of the Earth could not be detected, but there was a consistent detection of motion... Would that falsify relativity? Well, it, it's just it's just a hypothetical it hasn't been done yet. I know that's why it has a hypothetical preface. <laughs> the answer is yes. It's, it's absolutely yes, right? Because now you have no work to go. Would it falsify relativity? Yes. That's actually been done. It was done at the time, and we read the quote from Einstein saying. Well, if Dayton Miller, who was replicating Michelson Morley, hundreds of thousands, actually millions of measurements, if, if his measurements are correct, if his results are true, and they're not just some fundamental instrumental error that we can't figure out but must be there, then my whole theory is wrong. And if his whole theory is wrong, the heliocentric model is wrong. It's been replicated, again, over 5 million measurements and replicated even in the 21st century. So there is a consistent detection of motion, even though relativity stepped in to try to save the heliocentric model by claiming that you can't actually detect the motion and that it should be zero and that when you get the friendship it's just an error well it's been consistent you don't have instrumental error consistently caring about cardinal direction caring about altitude caring about solar motion the equinoxes that's not how that works you know i watch if my watch is one second behind it isn't isn't accurate when i hold my hand to the east but then inaccurate and one second behind when I hold it to the west. No, it would just be one second behind. It wouldn't care about direction. It wouldn't care about altitude. It wouldn't care what time of the year it is. There would be something in my instrument that's wrong that makes it one second off. That's what instrumental error is. So, in conclusion, heliocentrism has been falsified. And in fact, for over a century. Not everybody can be a robot polisher. This conversation seems to require very specific sequential binary questions to get to the bottom of it because the propaganda and indoctrination is so strong around this subject. You should ask yourself, why? Why is some test with light beams, like, gotta be so lied about, right? Like, that is super weird, right? That's kind of random. 